Jonas and Laura meet on New York City's subway and only on the subway. That's not because they're trying to escape their parents, although both teens who come from broken homes wouldn't mind an escape. It's that the subway is the only place where Jonas and Laura can meet. That's because Jonas and Laura are growing up 40 years apart. When Jonas first meets Laura, she acts weird. She doesn't have a cell phone and seems confused when he suggests that they hop off the subway and hit a Starbucks. Laura's also confused by Jonas's behavior. Even when she gives him her number at her dad's place, he still doesn't call. But after several meetings on a graffiti-tagged subway, the teens finally figure it out. For Laura, it's 1973. For Jonas, it's the present. Sure, the premise of this book sounds a little groovy, but in spite of the small amount of confusion that magical realism lends to the story, it seems to work. Jonas and Laura's love exists in a space and time of its own, and isn't that the way it is with love? Especially at its newest and most exciting, it feels like a secret space, untouched by the real world. Subway love may hinge on a clever conceit, but the real highlights for me were the author's lovely writing and the refuge these two lost teens find in each other, at least for a time. <laughs> 